Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about a condition called marginal keratitis. Marginal keratitis can be terribly painful for patients who have it. So please continue watching this video to learn more about this condition. Marginal keratitis is basically a condition in which the antigens of Staph aureus get onto the cornea usually via the eyelids and they get onto the peripheral aspects of the cornea and um, the outer bits basically and what they do is they cause a localized response here. The changes that ensue typically involve the outer layer of the cornea which is known as the epithelium breaking down and this can lead to ulceration. As indicated earlier the process of marginal keratitis is a response to the antigens of S. aureus as opposed to a direct infection of the cornea by Staph aureus. It's basically what is known as a hypersensitivity reaction. Classically the lesions that are found on the cornea tend to be found where the eyelids meet the cornea. In terms of risk factors, the classic risk factor for a patient to go on to develop a marginal keratitis is blepharitis. Also, it has been associated with conjunctivitis. It therefore goes without saying that if the condition of blepharitis is the main trigger for a potential marginal keratitis, primary prevention of marginal keratitis can potentially be obtained through good lid hygiene practices. When one presents for an eye examination, marginal keratitis is classically diagnosed clinically. So that is via observing the eye with a slit lamp, taking a careful history and listening to the patient's symptoms. In terms of whether a blood test or a um, swab etc needs to be sent off the answer to this is no it's usually purely a clinical diagnosis patients may also have had a attack similar to the one they currently have in the past the classic features that patients present with include a painful red eye they may have increased sensitivity to lights so this is photophobia and their eye may very well be watery. On clinical examination, the features of marginal keratitis are classically found at 2, 4, 8 and 10 o'clock. This is where the eyelids interact with and overlap on the cornea. The lesions may initially start off as isolated lesions, however they may then go on to coalesce and form one large um, area of infiltrate. The hallmark feature of marginal keratitis is these peripheral infiltrates which may go on to form ulceration. However, between the infiltrate region um, and the edge of the cornea itself, there's usually a clear peripheral zone approximately one to two millimeters in size. In terms of treating marginal keratitis, it is important to initially get on top of the active inflammation that is taking place. Then further down the line or acutely, one can start a treatment course for blepharitis, which involves lid hygiene practices. If you watch my video about blepharitis, you can learn more about um, the condition itself and how it is treated. I will link it up here and also in the link description down below. So in terms of the mainstay of treatment for marginal keratitis, it involves eye drops and this can either be a single eye drop, which includes a combination of steroids and antibiotics, or it can be the two broken down so therefore one steroid eye drop and one prophylactic antibiotic eye drop. Usually the condition responds well to treatment and it can take up to two to three weeks for complete resolution of the condition. However, patients should be advised and warned that if the lid hygiene um, issues reflare, then potentially the marginal keratitis may also reflare in the future. Thank you for watching this video about marginal keratitis. It is a quite common condition, unfortunately, and it can be terribly debilitating for patients. However, the frustrating thing about the condition is it can potentially be prevented by simple